It all started with my campaign. I was formerly the governor of Georgia, and my opponent was our incumbent, which was the current office holder, Gerald R. Ford, and I won by a narrow margin. I had no previous national political experience, and I had lived in the South for most of my life. And in 1964, I graduated from the United States Naval Academy, and I served as an engineering officer in nuclear submarines. And when my father died, I took over my family's peanut farm. I was a born-again Baptist, even though I strongly believed my faith. I respected the other religions. Most people considered me a casual president, and I'd have to agree with them. I wore sweaters instead of business suits, and I eliminated some of the ceremonial things, such as trumpets announcing my arrival. I also appointed more women and minorities into my staff. My lack of Washington communications actually helped me win the election because I had not yet been involved in any failures or scandals. But this Washington outsider persona also had negative effects. I was not successful in many of my policies because I wasn't yet tainted by these Washington politics. Thus Congress didn't connect with me which made it difficult to get things done. I couldn't fix the economy without hurting something. I had a good amount of success in deregulating this over comp complicated systems. I just reduced or removed the government uh, control. From industries and transportation, I wanted to fix the, cr the energy crisis with nuclear power and reduce oil intake. We encountered problems with nuclear power on Three Mile Island. I also we tried to make up for our past discrimination, but the University of California took it too far and did reverse discrimination. When it came to my foreign policy, my personal beliefs provided the foundation, and my belief in human rights helped me make all of my decisions to finding ethical decisions show was when I helped Egypt and Israel come to an agreement that was called the Camp David Accords. This was a peace treaty and it said Egypt would recognize Israel as their own country. But Israel had to redraw, withdraw from the Sinai Peninsula. This was one of my most important achievements. Help pave the way to peace between Israel and Egypt. I also remember how my beliefs in human rights stressed the relationship between the Soviet Union and the United States. They didn't let their citizens speak their mind, and I was very outspoken about this situation, about their rights. Even though our relationship was stressed, we still signed SALT II, which limited the amount of nuclear warheads in our possession. The Senate never ratified this because the Soviet Union attacked Afghanistan, completely removed it from the Senate's consideration. I also boycotted the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow along with 60 other nations. Then came the hostage crisis. This is when Iran took 52 American hostages. They did this because the Shah Orking of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah Dalavi, who we supported, fled Iran because of the revolutions against his government. Later, out of the concern of the Shah's health, let him enter the U.S. This outraged many Iranians, so they seized the American embassy and held them hostage. They also held more Americans hostage. In total, there was 52 of them, and they imprisoned them for a total of 444 days. To get them back, I authorized a risky mission. This ended in failure, and then the Shah died. I could tell I was becoming less popular. I didn't win the 1980 election, but after a lot of secret talks of, with Iran, they allowed the release of American hostages as soon as I left the office. And the new President Reagan, Reagan sent me as a private citizen. 
to a military base in West Germany to greet them as they return. Overall, I enjoyed my time as president, and I enjoyed telling you guys about it.